For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the old Republic. Before the dark times. Before the Empire. What's going on guys? I am the Walrus Jedi, and as you've seen in the title of the video, today's video is uh, going to be, what is a Jedi? So basically, we're going to try and answer that question. So if you like these kinds of videos, and would like more in this style, then please consider liking and subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more. Now, now I, I this question might be a dumb question to some, but with the recent abomination that Lucasfilm calls the Acolyte, and its severe lack of understanding of Jedi, which allowed Leslie Headland to defame and villainize the Jedi, I figured I'd make a video on the Jedi and see what a Jedi is exactly, you know, kind of so we can understand what a Jedi is and see how far off the Acolyte is with their portrayal. And uh, yeah, we will be seeing what George Lucas has to say on Jedi, but first, let's get a basic understanding of the Jedi. And for that, I'm going to start with the Jedi Code. Here is a clip from Swotor of a character saying the Jedi Code. There is no emotion, there is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the Force. These five lines form the basis of what a Jedi is. First, there is no emotion. There is peace. Put simply, control your emotions, which allow you to see the situation clearly. Losing control of your emotions can cloud the situation, leading to mistakes. Well, we could put it into real life. When you're angry... Do you make the best and most wise decisions that you could make? Or is it when you've got a cooler head, you've had some time to think, that's when, the that's when better decisions come about? Qui-Gon Jinn is an example of what to do. You know, he's always calm and cool and he's never letting his emotions, you know, pull him every which way. And then obviously Anakin is the opposite. He's always letting his emotions dictate what he does. Second, there is no ignorance, there is knowledge. This is a pretty easy one. Knowledge is power. Without knowledge, you don't know anything, basically. And that leads to fear, and we all know where that leads. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. A character that exemplifies this, I feel like, is Yoda. Characters are going to him for advice. Because, you know, he's lived a long time. You know, 900 years is a long... Well, almost 900 years, depending on when you see him. But roughly 900 years. And then a character that isn't necessarily wrong, but uses his knowledge for uh, some bad stuff is uh, sifo as As he is a Jedi that is pretty well gifted with, basically, visions. He can see the future, and he sees the Clone Wars. Thus, he's able to be manipulated by Palpatine, and ha he goes to the Kaminoans and creates the clone army. And unfortunately, that leads to, you know, Order 66 and all of that. But that's not necessarily sifo fault. It's just, unfortunately, he was manipulated. Third, there is no passion, there is serenity. Basically, a Jedi is to act selflessly rather than be selfish. And I feel like a really good example of this is Obi-Wan in exile, you know, on Tatooine, watching over Luke. That's what he's doing. He's watching over the new hope of the Jedi coming back. He, he's not, he didn't give up. He didn't say, oh, I failed, boo-hoo, I'll just go to the bar and get drunk and, you know, be a bum and basically just waste away. No, he went in exile and kept an eye on Luke. You know, he, he was there to get Luke out of scraps if if need be and eventually he was he was there to train unfortunately he didn't get a whole lot of training done with Luke before he died but that's beside the point and then a character that as an example of what not to do was Dooku when he uh fell to the dark side basically you fall to the dark side you're going to make selfish decisions. The dark side is of itself selfishness. It's always going to push you in that direction because you're always going to be like, your decision making is going to be about 
what's best for me. Next is, there is no chaos, there is harmony. All of life is connected, and the Jedi seek to do the will of the Force. And obviously Qui-Gon Jinn with, you know, you know, letting the will of the Force guide him rather than strictly the Code or the Jedi Council. And then Anakin Skywalker is an example of... He's an example of what not to do for all of these. Now, he does have positive attributes. He's not a complete and utter, you know, evil character. He, he did do some good things as a Jedi, but unfortunately that's kind of overshadowed when you turn to the dark side and uh, help kill your fellow Jedi and help establish an evil regime. And last but not least, there is no death, there is the Force. Yes, every living thing does eventually die. But this is not a cause for excessive mourning, as all living things are of the Force, and once they die, they become one with the Force, which continues life. And uh, Yoda is a good example of this, as, you know, he dies and he he's ready to die, and he passes on. He doesn't like, no, I must survive. I can't die. I gotta hold on. And then Anakin is obviously with Padme and seeing the, the visions of Padme and, and even his mother. He tried to stop them. Well, with his mother, that was kind of out of his hands. But with Padme, he tried to stop those visions and he caused them to come true. So he was his own undoing in the end. This does not mean that the Jedi are soulless automatons who have no emotions and they don't care about people. Jedi are flawed beings who, to the best of their ability, do good in the galaxy. They are going to make mistakes, but this does not mean that the Jedi Order as a whole should be cast aside and it's corrupted or whatever. There's a reason it, lis it lasted a thousand generations, as Obi-Wan said in A New Hope. A thousand generations, or basically roughly 25,000 years. That is not an insignificant amount of time. And if the Jedi Order was wrong, it would not have lasted that long. Jedi are good for the galaxy. They help. If no Jedi existed in Star Wars, then the galaxy would be a, a far darker place, more evil, and good people couldn't be around because there just would be too much corruption. Jedi help maintain and keep peace and keep evil at bay. I mean, Jedi are role models. They're people that you should look up to. They're not, you know, they're they're trying to do good. You know, if more people were more like Jedi, the world would be a better place. The galaxy would be a better place and all that. So it's just... Now, let's see what George has to say on the matter of Jedi. This is from an interview with George Lucas from the Star Wars Archives, 1999 to 2005, by Paul Duncan. George Lucas. No, they are not like cops who catch murderers. They are warrior monks who keep peace in the universe without resorting to violence. The Trade Federation is in dispute with Naboo, so the Jedi are ambassadors who talk both sides and convince them to resolve their differences and not go to war. If they do have to use violence, they will. But they are diplomats at the highest level. They've got the power to send the whole force of the Republic, which is a hundred thousand systems, so if you don't behave, they can bring you up in front of the Senate. They'll cut you off at the knees, politically. They are like police officers. As the situation develops in the Clone Wars, they are recruited into the army, and they become generals. They're not generals. They don't kill people. They don't fight. They're supposed to be ambassadors. There are a lot of Jedi that think that the Jedi sold out, that they should never have been in the military, but... Paul Duncan, do you think that? George Lucas, it's a tough call. It's one of the conundrums of which there's a bunch of in my movies. You have to think it through. Are they going to stick with their moral rules and all be killed, which makes it irrelevant, or do they help save the Republic? They have good intentions, but they have been manipulated, which was their downfall. There was never a war between the Jedi and the Sith Lords. The Sith Lords were in control for a long time, and what happens when you have a world full of Sith Lords? They start killing each other to see who's going to be the top Sith Lord. They don't vote, they just kill. It's the medieval feudal system. Then the Republic came to power, and the Jedi brought peace into the galaxy by being ambassadors and troubleshooters. 
So when the Senate decides to do something, or the Jedi Council discovers something that's amiss, the Jedi fix it. The Jedi don't like to fight people. They're monk warriors. They're monks first, and they try to convince people to get along, and if you don't comply, your hand comes off. They use their power to keep the governments of all the planets in line so that they don't do terrible things. Paul Duncan. And they have the moral authority to do that? George Lucas. Yeah, they are the most moral of anybody in the galaxy. They're monks. The Sith practice the dark side and are way off balance. The Jedi aren't as much out of balance because they're the light side of the Force. They still have the bad side of the Force in them, but they keep it in check. It's always there, so it can always erupt if you let your guard down. The Emperor snookered the Jedi with Order 66. The nascent rebellion and the Jedi, they didn't move fast enough. The Jedi won't lead droids. Their whole basis is connecting with the life force. They'd just say, that's not the way we operate. We don't function with the non-life forms. So if there is to be a Republic army, it would have to be an army of humans. Or... I'm assuming also living beings, so like aliens. It doesn't have to necessarily be humans, but George only said humans. That was quite a lot, but it is important, as it comes straight from the horse's mouth, to say that it comes from George. To me, when George Lucas talks about Star Wars, if you call yourself a Star Wars fan, you should listen as what he has to say about the world he created could have great insight, and you could learn things, you know, about the Jedi, the Sith, the Force, really anything. Luke, Skywalker, Han Solo, any character. Yeah, like, if George Lucas is talking about Star Wars, I think you should listen. Now that we have gone over all of this stuff, let's see if we can answer the question, what is a Jedi? A Jedi is a warrior monk with the ability to use an energy field called the Force. They serve as diplomats and ambassadors and use these skills to resolve situations peacefully but when the need arises, they will use their lightsabers with killing as an absolute last resort. They are guardians of peace and life. They will fight the forces of the dark side, like the Sith, to protect the galaxy from their evil. They are the most moral beings in the galaxy, but they are not perfect. Well, that's what a Jedi is. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below. Did you already know all of this? Should I do a video like this on the Sith? You can also let me know on those points in the comments down there. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.